Hey y'all, Noons here. Welcome back to Noons Airborne RC. If it's your first time here, smash that like and subscribe button so you can get notified for future content. Well, we're on to our next part. We're going to be going ahead and fitting in our thrust tube and our turbine and getting everything aligned and buttoning up the rear end. So let's roll that intro. And we're back y'all. So for the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need to go ahead and dig our fuselage out the box. You're also going to need a thrust tube. We are going to be using Paul Applebaum's uh, thrust tube. I also have another one from JP Hobby. And if you want to save some money, I'd go ahead and get the JP Hobby. They're pretty comparable. One's US handmade, the other one's made overseas. Reason why I'm using this one today. You're also going to go ahead and need your turbine because we're going to have to go ahead and do the spacing on this. One other thing you're going to also need is you're going to need a bulkhead. Now this is a bulkhead that I went ahead and my buddy designed for me. I made one myself but I like his design a lot better. He has a Glowforge and he went ahead and he uh, cut this out. Uh, if you don't have a buddy with the Glowforge, there are services on the internet. Um, you also can make one of these by hand with a uh, bandsaw or a rip saw and measuring it out. Uh, the measurements have the minimal amount uh, touching the pipe as you can so we can get the airflow right through the void spaces right there. Um, this bad boy right here will be fitted uh, on the back side and that keeps our tube centered in the rear and we'll center it in the front with the turbine. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now I'm just letting you know, this is a lot of tight space that we're working in. So the camera angle, um, I couldn't just quite get it. All you'd see is my hands. So a lot of it we're gonna be doing step by step and a lot of it will be, uh, the other part will be overview. So the first thing we do is we get our thrust tube and this is what we're gonna need along with our bulkhead and our turbine. We're not gonna be doing any cutting like Paul Applebaum's uh, on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, how to go ahead and do it, all right? So the first thing you're going to need is there's three screws that hold the bell onto the thrust tube. I went, there, uh, went ahead and already and I removed them. So that's what you've got to go ahead and do so you can get the bell to come out. This is imperative if you're going to do it my way versus cutting up your plane. All right. The next thing, as you can see, I already have these put in. Like I said, it's going to be hard to show that, so we'll go ahead and put the clip in. But I'm going to show you how we went ahead and we got that um, area on where to put these and how we're going to mount it too. So let's get started. All right, we're back. We have our fuselage right here. The first thing we're going to go ahead and need is we're going to need our bulkhead. I uh, went ahead and I measured it out to where I want it to go. This slips in right in here, and that is my location on where I'm gonna have my bulkhead. You could make it a smaller diameter to get all the way to the rear or up here. I found that this right here worked good with the maneuvering and all the other stuff that I went ahead and I uh, had to do, all right? Now, the next thing we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna get on the other side, is we're gonna take our pipe and we're gonna feed it in through the rear without the bell. So you got to get it in there and get it started. Mine is a tight fit because like I said, it was cut on a glow forge with tight uh, tolerances. So, and if you make it by hand, you can make it a little loose. You just want enough to hold the, uh, the tube on um, nice and tight, but not too tight. And you definitely don't want it to be flopping around uh, when you're flying. All right, now we got the tube in here. Let's go ahead and flip over the plane. I will get started on the next spot. Go ahead and move this here and move this so you guys can see exactly what I'm trying to do. Now you go ahead and you remove these two screws so you can remove the access bay traditionally for the EDF. As you can see, I do have uh, some aluminum tape right here. And all that is, is it's separating the channel from where the wires for the rudder and the two elevators go from this area right here. It is still completely open through right here. This is just an area for me to 
keep it separated as good as possible. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is you will take your bell and I have mine lined up where I want it to meet the thrust tube and you basically will just push the thrust tube on in and you will mate the two halves together just like that. Now you got a completed thrust tube in this little area. So how I got to mark where I'm gonna put these little uh, fins. Now everybody's gonna do this differently. My way is not the right way, but it was the easiest way for me to do it. So let's go ahead and move the camera a little bit. And as you can see, I have the thrust tube in here and the curvature right here actually centered the thrust tube for me now that I have the bell and the tube connected with the bulkhead in the rear. So as to get the spacing for it, I'll have to move this back. We need our turbine. Now, this is the bottom. Uh, this is the top of the turbine, so you have to put it in upside down from when you're looking at it, but it is right side up. Now, the spacing for these, the rule of thumb, from what I've seen what people do, is they line up this edge of the bell till you see the screws right here, okay? So we'll drop that in, and notice I'm using the stock wood for the EDF. Now, the EDF sits in these two back holes right there, kind of hard to see, and my turbine is going to sit far forward. And as you can see, it's going to be kind of hard to hold because, let me see if I can get this more straight up and down so I don't have gravity working against me. All right. So I lined up my turbine in the front and I drilled my holes and that's the turbine in there nice and straight. Now once I got this uh, thrust tube in, obviously you cannot see the holes. So I will go ahead and I push my thrust tube back till I got it to where I want it to go. And it is right about right there and you can see the back of the uh, bolts. So this is my spacing. Now obviously, you could move the turbine up about an eighth of an inch. Um, you can add more wood up here. You can make your mounts a little different. That's going to be all on you. The reason why I only went this far forward is because of this. Let me slide this towards the front. Okay, do you see how much thrust tube I have that's just peeking out? I have literally about an eighth of an inch sticking out. Get that angle for you guys. I have about an eighth of an inch sticking out farther than the back of this right here. I don't want this to be inside because this is where the hot gases are going to come out. I want it to be a little bit out. So from right there... That's where the turbine has to be. If I move the turbine more forward, then my thrust tube is actually in the um, foam, and we don't want that. So now that I had the distancing all said and done, we'll take out the turbine. That's when I marked my holes. When I had the turbine, I went ahead and I drilled them out, and I went ahead and I screwed it, and I threw thin CA in there to shore it up. This is where... I'm going to mount my um, my thrust tube. I'm not going to go in from the top. I'm going to actually screw it in from the side with some 2 millimeter screws. It makes it easy. It gets out of the way. And like I said, it is cramped. This is all you guys would see if I did it a different way. And I, hopefully this video works out for everybody. So once I had this all lined up the way that I wanted, I went ahead and I marked right here with a black marker. So now I know that I'm in line with this. And once I had all that, there's a whole bunch of taking it apart and putting it back together again, guys. I'm just letting you guys know. So you have to be patient with this if you're doing it this way. And obviously, I don't know if you guys could see, but there is my little line right there. And my line right there. 
So uh, what I did is I JB weld these on and I got them all centered and I got them all straight. Once that went ahead and uh, it cured, I went ahead and I drilled my hole right through and I used the rivets that come with Paul Applebaum's uh, kit. And as you can see, I went ahead and I smashed them out. Now let's go ahead and cue in the video. I lost a lot of video when my phone rebooted itself. So we're gonna go ahead and show this part and then we're gonna go ahead and come back and show everything installed since you went ahead and you seen how it went. Now the only thing after you see the next series is once you have your bulkhead in the area that you want it, you'll have to go ahead and epoxy this in. So let's go ahead and move on forward. So we're gonna be using the rivets that came with our uh, tailpipe. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna slip them from the inside because we're gonna pound them from out here. Now, I, best way to do this is with an anvil, but I don't have an anvil. So we're gonna have to try and finagle this out a little bit. There we go. I think we figured it out. All right, now I went ahead and I glued in the bulkhead and I like to use JB Weld Clear Weld and we're gonna go ahead and let this dry and cure for a few hours before we go ahead and slam everything together. Be right back. All right, we're back. Excuse uh, the air conditioner noise. It's getting a little warm out here in the desert. So as you guys can go ahead and see, I got the bell, I got it attached to the tube like we talked about. I have it screwed in here and in here, she's not gonna go anywhere. I got the turbine in with its four screws. And if you go ahead and you look at it, right about right there, you can see the lip is lined up with the bolts. So our spacing right here, I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but it's in there, you know what I mean? Um, out the back, I'm gonna go ahead and slide it over. You can go ahead and see the tube is right here. This is the outside part right here and the inside, as you can see, it does not move. It is two pieces, so the outside does rotate a little bit as you guys can go ahead and see on that right there. Other than that, she is pretty much ready. Let me go ahead and take the camera out real quick. As you can see, she's centered up right there. And the turbine's in. And now this part goes right here. And that's it. All said and done. And that goes ahead and concludes us installing the pipe and the turbine. As you can see, um, I did a lot of it off the camera, but you know, in and out looks perfect. I think it's gonna act really, really well. I'm happy the way that it's turned out. Um, I think this 45 is going to push this thing real, real good. So the next uh, video that will be coming out will be us plumbing everything and getting all the electrical and getting it all set up and doing the CG compared to the EDF and getting this bad boy up in the air and ready to go. So continue to watch. Stay tuned. Noon's out.
get some.